Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to TSX, the so-called experts. I'm on Rafe Griffin's veranda. Once again, out in the suburbs, I'm Phil Davis from the washing line. And you, my friend? I am Rafe Griffin, and we've survived the whippersnipper so far. <laughs> yes. But people might be able to hear the lawnmower the in the lawnmower, background. There's a very nice yard next door there. That's probably why he mows and whippersnips so often. Uh, we're here to talk about football. It's been another great week of Brisbane Premier League. There were some, well, look, there were a lot of goals around the grounds, were there not? There were a lot of goals around the grounds, particularly on Saturday night down at Cornubia Park. Yes, uh, Lions versus North Pine Sports Club. I think that's what we've been corrected on, isn't it? North, well, I think so. I'm not sure. North Pine Sports Club. There's some history. I'll have to go back and have a look at uh, the correspondence about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've got a netball facility and yeah. uh, I think there's a cricket oval over the back as well. I yeah. used to play goal defence netball, would you believe? Yeah, I believe that. Because I, I can't shoot. Even though I'm six foot five, <laughs> I can't shoot to save myself. I played uh, I played um, centre. Centre? Yeah. Nippy around the court, huh? Oh, I was the only one that would run. And it was <laughs> just, yeah, it was, uh, I got sent off playing netball. Oh, uh, we're going to look at the football from the weekend. Logan versus North Pine Sports Club. Terrific result for Logan. Is there any doubt about their the title cr- credentials? Well, I think there is. There's so many good teams, but 6-1... Did we see that coming? I didn't see that oh, coming. Oh, I didn't see 6 1 coming. You talk about uh, title credentials. Yeah. I'm just holding back for the time being, even though they are now the only defeated side in the competition. Yes, they are. I'm, I'm just holding back because yeah. I'm conscious that they are now in the same position as they were last year. Yep. Flying high. Mm-hmm. And after Easter, they've got the big run. With a whole series of events that possibly were outside their control, things yeah. changed rapidly. So I'm just. Holding back for the time being. Yeah, well, I think just on, on performances so far, you can you can you know give them certainly credibility that they're they're a top four candidate. No question mm. at all, especially with that result six one. It, it's a uh, it's a good result. Things are going well down Cornuvia Park. I, I think the uh, the off season shuffle, the, the change in lineup. There's not too much change, but uh, they got the core of the team. But it, it's it's all looking promising, and I think they'd be happy. Well, Josh Sherwood with two goals again yeah. on the weekend up he, there in the goal scoring ranks. He can't stop scoring. I think he's second. Uh, I think he is too. I think yeah. he's on five at the moment. Yeah, and uh, somebody scored more than that. Yep, we'll go. We'll talk about him later on, though. Okay, we will. Good result. Ace versus Rochdale out at Albany Creek. If you want to watch the highlights of that, that's up on the washing line. Rochdale three, Albany Creek nil. Of course, they suffered from losing Paul McCoola. And now they've lost Jordan Loy as well. Yeah, apparently so. Mm. So uh, I guess uh, Puria would have had his plans in place. I've been thrown into the tatters, particularly when you lose a central defender such as Paul yeah. McCoola, who I think we've talked about before, if not the best, certainly one of the best uh, yeah. central defenders going around, not only in the Brisbane competition, but across the whole across state. Across the whole state. Yeah, well, he's never made the team of the year. Strangely, I'm not entirely sure. Has he made why. your team of the year, though? Oh, indeed, he's I'm made sure my team of the year. I'm sure he has, yeah. Yes, he's made my team of the year, no question. But there's a lot of competition in, the, in that role because, uh, you know, well, East have got two of the best who seem to roll in every year. The, it's a really, really good result for uh, Rochdale. Uh, I think that could really kickstart the season, to be honest. I would yeah. expect them to be a completely different side. I was really happy to see the name Baird on the score sheet. Yeah, first win of the season, but also yep. good to see Greg Cheshire, who's returned also yep. on the score sheet as well. Yeah, well, that's true. I just think Michael Baird scores goals, and Rochdale will be a better side. Kapalabar versus Lions, another goal fest. Five goals to two, and uh, the spy is down on the ground. They tell me that Lions probably should have won by more, which is pretty impressive when they won by three already. Would Mooney be disappointed he's conceded two? I I don't think any coach will be disappointed at conceding two. But the the last one was a last kick of the game penalty. It was all over. Uh, Azawi, no surprise, scored both goals. Mm. But, uh, yeah, look, I think any, any coach is disappointed to concede, particularly, I guess, with uh, they, they have a bit of a makeshift back line at the moment. Simic yeah. out for the year and Rido's injured too. So he's having to fill that gap, but uh, still a good result. And uh, that was the three Saturday games. Mm-hmm. We had the Triple Decker games on Sunday. And Eastern Suburbs gave Uni a right old spanking. Paul they Nil. did, yeah. And I did call the highlights of that mm-hmm. one. And, you know, Juddy's usually pretty fair when he does the highlights. And he does, you know, if there is some action from one of the teams, yep, he'll put it in. There's very few action uh, being shown for UQFC. So 
We did say last week it was a bit of a bogey game for Reese. Yeah. Although well, I'm truly shaking that off. And that man, Carter Glockner, was impressive. He's the one who's leading the golden boot stand Indeed. at the moment with seven goals. Indeed. Uh, do you think, well, I think that we may have seen the real two teams there. I think he's thrown off that early season and a uh, big result there. I think they're up to, to third now. And uh, uni, well, I think they were overperforming. I like, I'd like to see them perform well for the rest of the year, but I think they've done enough not to get relegated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even at this early stage. Yeah, uh, yeah East did up into six with those two wins yep. at this point of time. So just sitting out, they're only one point outside the four where Holland Park are. But I think you're right. I think, I don't want to speak too early, but yeah, East looked to have hit their groove after those first two games at speed bump. Yep. UQFC, their first loss of the season. I guess we'll get to know over the coming weeks whether that was just a bit of euphoria at the start of the season or whether they do have... Oh, I don't think UQFC are going to finish top four. No. But whether they will finish in that middle four rather than the bottom four. Yeah. yeah it remains to be seen. Mm. Get to another game on Sunday. Ipswich Knights versus Mitchelton out at Eric Evans Oval. And Mitchie ran away 4-1 winners. What does it say about Mitchelton? I think they're okay. Yep. I'm not entirely sure how good they are going to be. I still have my reservations. You're not rating them in the top four at the moment? Well, look, I think we've got six teams that can make the top four at the moment. Yep. That's that's what I believe, and Mitchy are one of them. Uh, I have my doubts about Ipswich. They're already yeah. in trouble in the oh, uh, championship trouble, table. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you you want to you want a side like Ipswich mm. to stay around to have that regional, uh, yeah. I guess, representation. Mm. But yeah, he's got a bit of a challenge on his hand there, Stuart Drinkheld. Yes, he does. It's, it's, uh, it, and it's no re- no reflection on him mm. or whatever. He just it just simply appears as though he doesn't have the cattle. Yeah, that, that's that's the way it looks. The it's a congested area out there. So many teams around, and, and only limited players. And I'm sure he would have loved Brady Kenyon to be there <laughs> instead of at Western Spirit. We must have been on <laughs> telepathically there. Yeah, um, I don't know. With Ipswich, they need their top team to play well, or else they will get relegated. And it doesn't look like that at the moment. Just looking at it, like it was one all at half time. Yeah, they're probably not just quite a ninety minute side at the moment. They yeah. conceded two goals in the last ten minutes. So. Yeah. Yeah, you really need to be a 90-minute side rather than a 75, 80-minute side. Yeah, and Mitchie are a 45-minute side at the moment, unfortunately. But anyway, look, that was a confident win. That was an easy, you know, the scoreline suggested it was relatively easy, and, and I'd like to imagine that it probably was. I don't, didn't actually talk to one, anyone who was at that game, but uh, I'm sure we'll find out somewhere down the track. The other game was a cracker that I was at, at Peninsula Power. Peninsula Power 1 versus Holland Park Hawks 1. And I suggested in my match report that it wasn't a very inspiring game. And I think that's a fair call. I had a few comments suggesting I mean, that. Yeah. I think one of the Holland Park fathers uh, yeah. didn't uh, quite appreciate Oh, well, look, I was there at the game. And I, I just called them as I see them. And there was not a lot of opportunities on goal. It was it was just a lot of play in the middle. There was no... No penetration down down the flanks. They were trying to go into the box, and and both goals came from sort of mix up play. Yeah, you know, I, there was not really. Kato Aoichi had the, the, probably the other best chance, but even then, it was kind of a ball that rebounded off the keeper into his, and he was lying on his back on the ground mm. and just missed. But no, it's funny you say that because I saw Peninsula midweek last yeah. week in the FFA Cup, the Westfield FFA Cup mm. against uh, Brisbane Knights. And you sent me a message about half uh, an hour in saying, did uh, power look like scoring? And I said no. Mm. And it was just one of those ones where Chris Swain, the substitute, came on, yeah. scored from a free kick. That gave him a bit of confidence. Not Knights probably knocked around. But apart from that, yeah, there wasn't too much going forward there for, for power on the night up until that point where they scored three goals in the last 20, 25 minutes or so. Yeah, they looked disjointed. Uh, Holland Park were carrying a couple of injuries and they are going to be much more happy with that point. Because, you know, it's hard to go to Peninsula. They've got seven points out of the first four rounds. They could could have had ten because they mm. should have beaten Milton in the first game. But one thing I noted, I try to be as positive as I can, but there are some things that come to, to my attention. And uh, I'm not sure what's going on with Charles Mendy, but when he came off the bench, he just looked like a passenger for mine. Okay. Mm. 
one of the wags in the crowd suggested that uh, he wasn't uh, dealing with the step up from NPL. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I don't know, there's something going on. It, it could just be out of form. It happens to all players. But yeah. as we know, we've seen Mendy play and he is oh, he's absolute cr- quality. Credential speak for himself. You yep. would have seen him uh, last year when Morton Bay played Taringa in the FFA Cup. Yep. So, yeah, yep. Yep. He, he just, I don't know. I, I hope he, he comes good because uh, we need players like that. Exciting, attacking players. to uh, Especially combining with Cato up front. Yeah. Yep. And, I, you know, the suggestion that are they different types of players, they don't work together well, I don't think it's that at all. Cato was good, Jared Austin was good, uh, McAllister and Briggs were good for, for Holland Park. Uh, a lot of the game for mine was balls that ended up rolling to the keeper, you know, one of those games. But anyway, that's football. You get that in every league, Phil? <laughs> yes, you do. That was what happened around the Brisbane Premier League of the Flight Centre. Premier League on the weekend. Uh, we're just going to have a quick mosey on through the Capital One because there's some interesting results going down in there. Wolves FC and South United drew 1-1. And yeah. two of the teams that I, I believe are in contention for promotion already. And we, we, Well, I fancied North Star to be right up there, but they're, they're about seventh, I think, at the moment. Yeah, eighth at the eighth, moment yeah. with uh, one win, one draw, one loss. Mm. And Bayside United at the top. They're just behind Turinga. They're three points behind oh, Turinga yeah. in second. second position. Well, their game against Mount Gravatt, they played 87 minutes against 10 men. Yeah. Went down a goal yeah. and snuck away over 2-1 victory. It's not good times out at Mount Gravatt at the moment. 2-4, 13, 13 against and four losses from four games. If they continue the way they're going, they're almost certain to get relegated. Turinga, yes, they are the top side. They play Grange Thistle and I, I, I rate Grange Thistle as well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they beat them 4-1, so... Um, OK, so that was... Uh, was there anything else uh, we wanted to mention from the weekend? No, I think that's about it. Yeah, if you want to follow the Capital Leagues, of course, there's Capital League Roundups, and we, we cover it as much as we can. We had the Capital 2 Derby uh, highlights in the highlight show. Indeed. Western Spirit comprehensive over Ipswich City Bulls. Yes, and Brody Kenyon. Brody Kenyon, big red. Big red. Uh, one other thing that I thought I might mention is Acacia Ridge. Chasing their third promotion in a row. Seven one winners over Park Ridge in the Ridge Derby for what that's worth. They're looking sweet at the moment, aren't they, in second spot? Uh, yeah, they do. Juan Hummers. He just scores for fun. And I think he's won the golden boot two years in a row and he's looking for the third. Another hat trick there. I uh, that's a good league. Uh well that was the Capital Leagues and uh, people like the predictions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was What's your definition of like, though? Well, they like giving me heaps about them. Yeah. I, w- I was in about three different spots at that peninsula. I sort of vantage points, and uh, at that, every single vantage point, someone mentioned something to me. Admittedly, my predictions are in the program, but uh, it was always a case of, how many did you get right this week, Phil? I said, none. You wrote your program here. You keep talking. I'll just <laughs> recap, see what you got. I didn't bring my program intentionally. I just happened to have it in my, my bag still from the weekend, and I brought it out so I could use a bit of paper, not realising, of course, that you have plenty of paper. I do, let's see. <laughs> Logan and North Pine, a two-all draw. Yeah, that was close. Yep. Yep. Rogue Star, 1-0. <laughs> well, that was close. They did win. I'll Lions, take a win. Lions, 2-0. Oh, well, they, yeah, they yeah. won by more than two. I'll take that. East and UQ, a one-all draw. Oh, well, that was never going to be a draw, was it? Power, 2-1. <laughs> that was... And I'll give you Mitchelton versus Ipswich Knights, Mitchelton 3-1. That was pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't too bad. Yeah. Well, I like to go for one upset every week. Yes, I know. And that's why I went for the upset in the North Pine game. You know, I... Won't make that mistake again. Well, I had picked some <laughs> really big upsets last year. I got a couple of crackers and people thought I was a god. All right. Well, let's go through this week's game and let's see what the exclusive yep. upset of the week is. Uh, I haven't thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're about to discover it, I think. Seriously, uh, since the weekend, all I've been doing is writing. Every single night since then, all I've been doing is writing, so I haven't... So diligent. Yeah. Um, the first game's North Pine Sports Club mm-hmm. versus Eastern Suburbs. Uh, Eastern Suburbs are playing tonight, and they only have uh, the, the short turnaround. You would... Oh, well, look, I, I can't see... It. North Pine losing to it. The only thing that will affect it is if East are still leg weary from from Wednesday. But for mine, uh, yeah. I can't see North Pine beating East. Best hope I can come up with is that North Pine are at home. They are at home, but I think the pitch, which is pretty good at the moment, will mm. suit East. Mm. 
So, yeah, unfortunately, sorry, Gorillas, but yeah. we do want you to stay up, but we can't see it at this point. Mitchelton versus Capalabar. And now, Mitchie, you're in good form. Where, where are they on the table? They're about fourth, aren't they? Mitchelton are currently in third. Third. They're on equal second, just on goal difference behind lines on nine points. They play Capalabar. I've been bigging up Capalabar, but people have been telling me that their defence is more porous than I was led to believe, which is a bit of a worry, but I think they are a chance of getting something in this, and this is my upset of the week. Capalabar to beat Mitchelton at Taralba Park. I'm going to agree with you. Oh, my God. I think, yeah, I think this looms <laughs> as a danger game, perhaps, for yeah, Mitchelton. Yeah. You know, this this round before Easter, yeah. you know, it's not as... No, I don't think anyone's going to hold back, you know. They can yeah. have a bit of a, a week's break mm -hmm. and come back. So, yeah, I... Oh, we'll try. I'll go draw. I'll go two all oh, draw. Oh, you're going to go the draw? Two all draw. You're going to sit on the fence? Yep. Oh, you were going to go with Capella, but you decided to sit on the fence. No, I think Capella, but <laughs> like on table position at the moment, you've yeah. got third versus tenth. Mm -hmm. On that basis, you'd think Mitchelton mm. relatively easy. But I think Capella Bar will get something out of the match. We've had very few upsets, apart from yeah. UQ. You take UQ out of the equation mm. this year. There really hasn't been too many upsets. Um, well, I guess Mitchelton beat Holland Park, but it wasn't really an upset. No. Just should have gone the other way. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tip Capalaba to win that one. The next one's Holland Park. Hawks versus Albany Creek at up at the hill. White's Hill Reserve. And uh, I can't see Ace getting anything out of that. I think Holland Park, even with a midweek game, are, are superior to Ace. I'm, I'm yeah, at this point of time, as we talked about before yeah. with the review, got their own troubles with players moving yeah. on. And Corey I, having to fill gaps. Mm -hmm. And I was disappointed in the, the highlights of the game. You know, it was... Yeah, I think he's, Ace might struggle from here. And uh, I, I think that yeah, Holland yeah. Park will be penciling this in for you, a You'd figure that Ro Holland Park are at least the equal of Rochdale yeah. at the moment. Probably a tad better. So, yeah, hard yep. to see Albany Creek getting anything there. Yep. And that's usually the death knell. Albany <laughs> Creek will win that. Uh, <laughs> The next game is a great game. I'm off to this one. I love this game. It's Rochdale versus Logan and up at Underwood Park. And we have derbies, but these guys really don't like each other. Yeah, the M1 derby. They really don't like each other. If you're there and you talk to one set of supporters, I happen to have friends in, in both clubs, obviously. It's just down the road. And so you talk to one set of supporters and they just bitch about the other set. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what, oh, you mean Logan stole the game. Rochdale, Rochdale, think that they really dislike each other. And you've seen, a, as Logan have come into the league, they, they tend to get good results against Rochdale. You know, it's that, that, that game where they step up and, uh, yeah, look, this is a really tight game. I s think that Rochdale are a better team, mm. but I'm, I'm going to go to the draw in this one. I think there's going to be too much in it. I think that you may find a whole flurry of yellow cards <laughs> early in the game. And let's hope that doesn't lead to a red card late in the game. Of course, which means I'm completely wrong and they'll be out there, they'll be kissing each other and hugging each other and helping each other up off the ground and pulling out of tackles and all that sort of stuff. But It's a great place to watch football, though, oh Underwood yeah. Park, isn't it? With oh, that it grandstand, good atmosphere, everyone's sort of yep. nice and close yep. there. Yep. I actually much prefer Underwood Park since they closed them downstairs. It's a football venue again. You get yep. upstairs, and you know it's and it's a good venue, even without that that bottom bit. And you don't have to listen to duos playing Kenny Rogers songs while you're watching the game. Um, what are you going to go? You haven't oh. even thought about it. No, no, and I never think about these games before until <laughs> we actually talk about them. I thought <laughs> I was looking up who the referee was when you talked about yellow cards. It'll be Alex King on Saturday night. Okay, so. um, yeah, he's not too bad. Yeah, he's got a bit of well. He's had 20 minutes in an A-League game, replacing Alan Milliner. He did, in the year. yes. Oh, Phil, 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 Come Phil. on, spit it out. I'm going to go Rochdale. Okay. I don't know why. Home ground advantage? Mm. No, I'll just... I'll go Rochdale. Okay, well, I'm going to go... No, no reason whatsoever. I don't really like any draws because the draws are statistically harder to come by in the, in the Brisbane Flight Centre Premier League than... In the, you know, say the A-League or, or the EPL or something like that. But uh, I'm going to go to the draw. Lions versus Peninsula. Now, this is the Blue Ribbon game, isn't it? Well, here's one team that Maybe has... Maybe not at this point, but yeah. it should be the Blue Ribbon game. Yeah, well, here's yeah. One, one team that has had two draws from their four yeah. outings so far in Peninsula. Yeah. Grand final rematch. Yeah. Six o'clock on Sunday night out at Lions. Yeah. Six o'clock, is it? Six o'clock. Oh, I thought it was four o'clock. Terrible. 
<laughs> I'm not going to be getting to bed till very late. No. Perhaps I'll go to UQ instead. Uh, yeah. It is our feature game. It is our this feature weekend. Game. Yeah, I just wanted to get out there anyway. Peninsula, they're not in great form, but they're yeah, a better they're side than, than, they, than they've shown so far. It's got to click eventually, doesn't it? Yeah, it does have to click eventually. I, I don't think it'll be Sunday, though. Mm, no, it's going to be tough. I think it might be like 3-1 to line, something like that. Well, that's what you'd imagine on form. If you were to, you know, look at, at the results so far, that's that's kind of the scoreline you'd go with. I'm sure the betting agencies will be around there at that point, you know. But Lions have got some quality, quality players. You know, mm. Jack Lewis and Nathan Shepherd and and Michael Butters and, you know, and, and on that field they know it's every blade of grass, you know. The old cliche, but... Oh, but potential, as I said, you know, mm. Mendy, you talked about Mendy, yep. Cato. Yep. Uh, Austin, yeah. Furigal. Yeah. No, I've mentioned all the up front players there. Yeah. Um, well, Trent McAvoy's a great defender. Who, who played in goal on Sunday? Was it Burroughs or Reesby? Uh, it was Reesby. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. I think it was Reesby. I assumed it was Reesby. He was wearing the, um, the fluoro the yellow. The fluoro yellow. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe he borrowed. Maybe it was Burroughs and he borrowed his jersey, but I'm sure it was Reesby. It's a tough one, isn't it? Oh, I'll stick with 3 1 line. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't I'll, usually give. Score predictions, yeah. but I will this time. Well, I'm going to tip lines, but I, I think it, it's it's going to be. Uh, what are you saying? 55 45? Not quite a 50 50 game? Or is it a 50 50 game? I don't know. Look, I think Kato Aichi is going to actually perform really well. He's going back to Lions. You know? But uh, look, I'm going to tip lines to win it 1 0. Okay, close yeah, one. I don't have to give a score line really, but I'm going to tip yep. the lines to win it 1 0. Now. now, a game which we probably wouldn't have thought last week was going to be very close. And before the season started, we would have suggested that Ipswich <laughs> were probably favourites. UQ FC versus Ipswich Knights at Walton Bridge Reserve. Are they still there? Yeah, they're still there. One more week, is it? No, the first six or seven home games. Uh-huh. I think it's like till June, oh, at least. God. It'll be cold by the time we get out of there. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this one? I haven't <sighs> seen either team play yet. I have. Honest. I've seen... What, UQ and one and a half games? I haven't seen... I saw Ipswich Knights during the Silver Boot. I haven't seen yeah. them during the season proper at the moment. So we're both sort of coming out of the dark. Here comes the so-called experts tag. This is exactly <laughs> what... <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. That's why we are... Ah, uh, look, I'm, I'd I'm, suggest the squad quality yeah. of UQFC yeah. is better than Ipswich Knights. Yeah, I would suggest... Suggest so as well. And There's some ga- real take... game changes there. There's Josh Gromman, who was in the raw system. Yep. There's Jeju, who was very yep. impressive. Yep. Uh, you know, Linus Shibler in goal. Yep. Um, and that's not to put Ipswich Knights. But, you know, I'll, I'll never rule out Ipswich Knights because yep. they do have that fighting spirit. They yep. are tight. And they came back for that three-all draw against Albany Creek uh, a couple of rounds ago. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Yuki. Yep. I just think that that one big loss is not going to completely... No. You know, if they were playing this week and they were playing anyone else, except perhaps North Pine, but if they were playing Roche or Holland Park or anyone, I'd be tipping against them. But I, I think I, I this think one... The, yeah, I think they just, hit, they just hit uh, a red-hot Easts yeah. side who had finally found their groove. Yeah, and uh, it was, it's uh, at Walton Park. Yes. Uh, Walton Bridge Reserve, and yep. it's uh, a bit small. They like it there, so... Yeah, but I'm reliably informed that while it's small at the moment, one of the goal mouse is in recovery. Ah. So there will be a change in field dimensions sometime soon. Ah, yes. before this weekend? I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll have to talk to our mate from the Gap. I'd suggest that they probably shouldn't do it. Well, I wouldn't. I, I imagine if I was um, the coach of uh, UQFC. David De Silva. David De Silva. Unfortunately, UQFC have no control, though. Well, this is true, yeah. but I would be <laughs> saying to them... Yeah, you know. Throwing a few extra dollars look, for the field lease. Well, that's true. <laughs> but the Gap are playing well uh, in the, in their own league, so that's that's what's important. And it, it does come down to that often that the better team prefers a bigger field. Yes. You know, they, they want it less tight. Peninsula but, certainly struggled there when they were there. Yeah, yeah. Well, which is strange. They, they weren't great on their own field on, on Sunday. They, I don't know. I, I, I think the, the, the Heat played a big part because... Like there was, Jim Bellis was refereeing at Turinga and he posted on yes, Facebook. Right. <laughs> oh my God, I'm about to. It's a, it's a, it's like a cyclone, and I was in the sun. I wanted to take my shirt off. It was, mm. and it was really, really hot. And I think a lot of players came out of that and said, you know, they they were 
they were sort of mentally preparing for a wet game and the next thing you know it was 33 degrees so I think that affected the tempo and once they got the tempo it was, was slow they, no one really picked it up but at the first 10 minutes it should have been Peninsula Peninsula should have won it they were all over Holland Park for 10-15 minutes but if you don't score you don't win although let's, they did score but <laughs> let's not look backwards let's, let's go forward so who was your upset of the week again? Uh, my upset of the week is Kapala Bath to beat Mitchelton so that is uh a strange upset of the week because you're tipping it as well. Those are all the games that are on this weekend. We are the so-called experts. Get out to one of these games. Next weekend, what are we going to do, Rafe? Next weekend? Isn't that the annual uh, all-star game out at uh, the George Negus <laughs> Oval? <laughs> well, it could well, well be. Can we talk about that next week? Because I'll tell you a story about that uh, yeah, you do. one day. You relate me that story because yeah. I know that story. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I would love our listeners to find out that yeah. story because it's hilarious. But look, I might even revive that. And see what happens because I do. Uh, I have a tradition with the various people that I've worked with that come east would like to pick a uh, you know a, a best so far team, you know. And I mean, just there's nothing else to do. Perhaps we can pick a north and south. What do you think? I think I'm disadvantaged because there's more south teams than north, isn't there? There's five teams, uh, north and yeah, yeah, seven. yeah. You got one more team. Well, we could make because I represent the good side. Well, we, it could be origin. Oh, we'd have to ring all the clubs and find out where the players were born. Yes. Yeah. Well, we should pick a team from each, shouldn't we? Maybe. Yeah, the best team. All right. Well, we'll talk about it. I hope you've all enjoyed listening today. We are going to be... Yes, re- Mr. Principal. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bart Simpson, come to my office. Yeah, we're going to be revamping and increasing and changing and updating and doing different things with this show as we roll along. We're just playing it by ear. Yeah, once the executive producer gets his uh, what, gets acting his, gear. Gets his pile together, we are going to be doing that. So, uh, yeah, keep listening in. Really, really happy with uh, how many people have been, been listening in. Um, we're doing this for fun, basically. We're just doing it because we want to do it. We don't have to do it. We just like doing it, don't we? Yeah. Are you a so-called expert? Yes. Yes. I'm a so-called expert as well. We have a better go. We better, because we've been talking for about half an hour. Oh, my God. We promised we would only go to Time flies minutes. when you're having fun. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you next week. Cheerio. Goodbye now.